This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 1.15. These problems will give you practice on understanding conformational analysis and Newman projections for linear alkanes. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these types of problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 1.15. You can also find a lot of additional chemistry videos and information on how to match up those videos with your course's textbook to help you in your course at ProtonGuru.com. Our first problem is a pretty standard one for organic chemistry exams. This is a question asking us to rank these different Newman projection conformers from the most stable, number one, to the least stable, number four. The very first thing you want to do in such a problem is to figure out which of these are the staggered conformations and which are eclipsed. The staggered ones have a relatively good amount of space in between the substituents, whereas the eclipsed ones are really pushing these two groups right up on top of each other. And the eclipsed conformers will always be higher in energy than the staggered in these sort of standard linear alkane cases. So just knowing that information, we know that the two staggered ones are going to be two of the lower energy or more stable conformations, and that the two eclipsed conformations will be the two higher energy, less stable conformations. So now we just need to compare the two staggered conformations to each other, see which one is the absolute most stable, and then we can compare the two eclipsed conformations and figure out which is the least stable. And the way you do that is you look for repulsions. Let's compare the two eclipsed conformations. The two largest groups, the most repulsive groups, are right up eclipsing each other here. That's going to be more repulsive than a tiny little hydrogen trying to get an eclipsing interaction with a methyl group this is going to be really bad for stability. It's going to take a great deal of energy to push those two large groups together. Even if the two groups in the staggered conformation are coming a little bit close to each other, they start to bump into each other. It's still not as bad as an eclipsing interaction, but it will make this conformation a little bit less stable than this one, in which you have the two CH3 groups pushed anti to one another as far apart as possible. And with that information in mind, we can rank all four of these. The two staggered ones are going to be the most stable, and they asked us to rank number one for the most stable. So that's the one where you put the two big groups as far apart as possible. And then the second most stable is still the staggered one, but it's a little less stable than the one we ranked number one because there's this little repulsive interaction known as the Gauss interaction. Then our two less stable conformations are the eclipsed ones. This one has a methyl trying to eclipse little hydrogens. Here the two methyls are all eclipsing one another, so this is the third most stable and the least stable has the greatest repulsion. Well, next we have a much more involved problem. It's asking us to actually produce our own Newman projections and to use those to draw a diagram to show how the energy changes upon rotating around the carbon-carbon bond in some particular molecule. In this case, they're asking us about 1-bromo-2-chloroethane. And this is really an involved problem. We really need to start off carefully and think this through. So first, let's just draw the molecule and set up our reaction coordinate diagram, our bond rotation versus energy. So this is the bromo-chloroethane. And Newman projections are the best for easily seeing whether groups are repelling each other or not comparing staggered and eclipsed conformations like we did in the previous problem. So let's draw a Newman projection. We'll try to start the lowest energy. That way we can start way at the bottom of our energy diagram and see how the energy changes as we rotate. Well, what is the lowest energy Newman projection? Well, just like in the previous problem, it's the one where you put the two groups that repel each other the most as far apart as possible. So it's going to be a staggered conformation, of course, and the bromine and chlorine will repel each other because they're both partial negative ends of polar bonds. Negative repels negative. They're not going to want to get close to each other. So let's say that's where we're going to start with zero. We haven't rotated around any bonds yet. So we put our new in projection. That's that point right there. And now we want to start rotating around that carbon-carbon bond, the front carbon that we can see and the back carbon we can't see, and think about how the energy will change so we do that. Well, we started staggered. And we know that we're at the lowest possible energy, so the energy just has to go up from there. So I've started an upward curve. And let's just rotate so that the back will move. So I'm going to move the chlorine to behind that hydrogen, this hydrogen to behind the bromine, and this hydrogen behind there. We're going to rotate it to the first eclipsed conformation, which is a 60 degree rotation angle. Now the staggered conformations, as we have here, always sit at local minima. That's a good rule to remember in case you face a problem like this. The eclipsing conformations always sit at local maxima. So this is a local maximum with the eclipsing interactions here. 
Since it's a lo local maximum, you must go down in energy as you rotate away from that position. So we're going to rotate the back, move the chlorine into here so it's staggered with respect to the front groups. Move this H over here so it's staggered in between the bromine and hydrogen. And we're going to rotate the back so this hydrogen is going to be here. So if we think about what that will look like, it's going to look like this. Now it's staggered, which is a local minimum. But it's very important not to put that energy as low as the starting point, because at the starting point it was the lowest possible energy. It's the most stable. Now we have a little bit of repulsion due to the Gauss interaction between the bromine and chlorine. So although it's still a local minimum, it's not quite as low in energy, not quite as stable as our starting structure was. Now if we keep rotating in the same direction, push the chlorine to be right behind the bromine, eclipsing that, push this hydrogen behind that hydrogen, push that back hydrogen behind that hydrogen, we're going to get to an even higher local maximum. It's higher in energy than this eclipsing because now we have the two most repulsive groups eclipsing one another. And the energy goes down from there because, as we said, it's a local maximum when you have an eclipsing conformation. And the next position where this chlorine moves into this space and this hydrogen moves down into this space and this hydrogen rotates into this space to make the next staggered, that's a Gauss interaction between those two species. So that energy should be the same as the Gauss conformer we found previously, just kind of rotating back to the start again. And then, if we rotate this chlorine down to be behind this hydrogen here, well, that gets you to this eclipsing conformation where you have a chlorine eclipsing a hydrogen, and bromine eclipsing a hydrogen, and hydrogen, hydrogen. Well, if you look at that, we have chlorine, hydrogen, bromine, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen here. If all the repulsive interactions are the same, then the energy should be the same. So those two are at the same height of hill. And now if I rotate this chlorine down to be anti to the bromine again, we're back to the start. A 360 degree rotation will take you all the way back to your starting point. So of course that energy will be the same as that energy.